Hello everyone from the Game Boy camera. I thought I would surprise you all because today we are, I don't know how to show you this. Let's go on full screen cam for a second. Today we are checking this out, which is the GB Interceptor, which allows you to plug a Game Boy cartridge into the Game Boy using a USB cable to take that data and put it in the computer and fingers crossed if I've managed to get this set up properly I should be able to hold it here at the desk and you can see up there I've got a second camera so let's see if that works and if I zoom in a little bit like that then yes there we go and you can see there is the image coming from the Game Boy camera 3 FPS 3 FPS maximum how Look at the difference in quality. Hey, to the gates! Seven months in. I'm going to get a photo of that. Oh, it's gone. Well, I can get a photo of the message. Look at that. Perfect. That'll be saved into my memories. Right. So, what we are actually doing today, I've got a load of games here. I've got a load of different, I can show it on that camera too, got a load of different GBA consoles, Game Boys, Game Boy Advances, original Game Boy, SP, all the different systems and what we're going to do is try out a bunch of games using this little piece of kit here. And I'll tell you a bit about what it actually is as well and what it does and stuff. So let's get started with well, use the Game Boy Pocket as this is the one here, and just out of shot, I've actually got a massive stack here of Game Boy homebrew games. Some I haven't played on the show before, some I have, and I might also. We've also got this, if I go back on full screen cam. We also have this, which I'm still trying to fill up, but it's basically... Eventually going to be my complete Game Boy collection in this massive folder so we can also try out some proper games on there as well and see how they run on it. So there's lots to look forward to in this stream. It might be a bit all over the place and fingers crossed everything keeps working all the way till the end. But for now, let's get started with trying out a homebrew game on the Game Boy Pocket. And I'm also going to try them out on here as well on the Analog Pocket. That'll be interesting to see whether that works. Yeah, what do you think of the uh, Game Boy Binder as a way of storing games? Here you go, if I put it on the table, you'll be able to see it a bit easier. So I'm still just, you know, going through it. I've put numbers at the top. I don't know whether you can see them there, but the idea is that I'm looking at a list of Game Boy games and I'm looking at the release dates for them and trying to organize them that way, which should be cool. Hey, Gone Mad Trying is here. Thank you for sending people over as well. Hello. We've got a very interesting stream for you today. And Fancy Doc's here too. Fantastic. So yeah, I've still got a long way to go with this. There's stacks of Game Boy games everywhere. I'm already worried about them falling out, but I used to have a really nice way. Hey, Gone Mad Trying. Right. We've got an interesting stream today. Uh, I just got it on Amazon. I can't remember exactly... Uh, let's see. I just picked the biggest one I could find on Amazon. Let's have a look on my orders. Make sure I'm not sharing that screen. Anyway, for, every, for everyone that's just joined today, we're looking at this piece of kit here, which is called the Game Boy Interceptor, and it uses a USB-C cable to actually take the signal from the Game Boy and transmit it to uh, Windows PC. Or Mac. Windows in this case, anyway. But, oh, something seems to be going a bit funny there with the background. Anyway, let's uh, find that binder. I can send you a link to it. Um, copy. Uh, I'll paste that in here. So if you want that particular binder, it is that one right there. But I'm not sure why... The background is going a bit funny then, so let's just try and restart this. Give it an old blow of the cartridge slots. It's probably going to make it worse. 
Anyway, there's an interesting story with this uh, device as well. This is actually the second one I had because the first one I got sent didn't work after... Well, it didn't work at all. The guy who made it for me um, accidentally uh, broke some of the cartridge bits. But yeah, there's the binder. Unfortunately, something seems a little bit different compared to what's on the actual screen. Maybe it's easier for me to show you on there. So, the sprites seem a little bit different to what we're actually getting on the Game Boy. So you can see, for some reason, it's added It's added a different background layer. This is all kind of experimental, so I'm kind of uh, figuring this out for the first time along with everyone else. But there's definitely something weird... Definitely something weird going on that's not matching what's on the actual Game Boy itself. Although... It might be an issue with the uh, Game Boy Pocket. Just zoom out a bit there. Yeah, apparently it might be an issue with the Game Boy Pocket. Do I know of any other Game Boy platformers that use ledge grabbing? Um, not off the top of my head, no. Right, let's leave that in there. Let's try it in the Game Boy Color. And see whether that makes any difference. I'm really scared of pushing that down as well because of... How fragile it looks. So, let's see how it shows up on the Game Boy Color. Still has the different background, which is interesting. It was working when I tested it earlier, but let's see. Yeah, there's something weird with the way the sprites are actually showing on the screen as well. So, watch the enemies on this in this next area. Yeah, you can't even see them on the actual interceptor, but on the Game Boy itself, you can see there's an enemy there hitting me. So it's like it's not intercepting the code properly or something. Pretty strange. Let's try it with an official release. I grabbed my binder again. Let's see. What's an interesting game we can test it with? One that people will know what it's meant to look like. Let's try, let's try Dr. Mario. That's a nice, simple game. That shouldn't run. I haven't tried it on the analog dock yet. I've got the dock over here and it is plugged in, so possibly. And also a bit later on in the stream as well, we're also going to try it out on the Super Game Boy. So it'll be interesting to see whether it works on there too. Yeah, there was something going on with the background tile, but let's try it with an official game. See whether that makes any noticeable difference. I mean, the background looks okay on this one. Everything seems to look normal. It's got rid of the colour entirely, which is interesting. But, oh wait, no. There is something missing. There is something missing. Let's zoom in. So, on the Game Boy Colour screen, I can actually see... Obviously, I can see the germs. Or... You know, what I need to line it up with. But, on the Interceptor, they're not showing up. Which is very strange. I wonder if I apply some pressure to it, maybe. There's a loose connection somewhere? But it's kind of strange that the entire game plays normally. Hmm, interesting. I might need to tell him it's not working again. Yeah. That's uh, unplayable. Let's try. I don't think it's anything to do with the different types of Game Boy that I'm running, but let's try it again in the Game Boy Pocket and see. We can try out some some other homebrew games as well. I've got the uh, got the EverDrive. Yeah. Okay. So Doctor Mario this time on the Game Boy Pocket. Let's see if that makes any difference. And no, same again. We don't seem to have any of the um, any of the germs in the game, which is really strange. Because you can see how it's meant to look on the actual Game Boy there. I'm not sure what could be causing it. I'll try I'll try switching it off, unplugging the actual capture card. And I'll try plugging it back in. 
I mean, this is all this is all interesting interesting tests and stuff to kind of figure out how everything's working. Okay, now it thinks the Game Boy's still turned off. Interesting. Let's try taking it out again. Give everything a good blow. That's what it needs. I mean, that will probably make it worse, not better. Okay, it still thinks the Game Boy's turned off. Or maybe it's the actual capture that needs refreshing on here. Let's try that. Okay, that worked. Okay, so whenever I switch the Game Boy off, I need to uh, reattach the capture. Hey, it's working now. Strange. Did anything change? It seems the same. Shall we try the other game again? I got one. It seems to be a bit fiddly at the minute. So let's try this game again, see whether the enemies actually show up this time. And can you all hear me and hear the game and stuff? Okay. Oh, weird. It's even, it's even weirder this time. Now the background's been filled with zeros. And, uh... They're not matching up with where they are on the Game Boy either. Even my sprite is jumping around the screen occasionally. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyone got any ideas why that might be happening? And this is all interesting, but yeah, it's not very playable in this state. Let's try... Give it a clean. I can try. Although it's brand new, so I don't think it would need cleaning. Right, I'll go and get some Q-tips and try cleaning this. I'll be back in just one second. Don't go anywhere. Right, I'm back. Let's try cleaning this with my little box of Q-tips, which I actually use for cleaning cartridges more than anything else. And I've got this, which should help. It's helped with cartridges in the past. So let's try a bit on there, just a little bit. Let's try cleaning in there first. I haven't actually tried cleaning this one. How am I going to line that up in there? There we go. So give that a clean. We should probably unplug it first as well. Let's give this bit a clean. And ah, I can't figure out where the camera is. Yeah, there was a little bit of dirt on there, but nothing really. And let's try cleaning inside there as well. And that one was kind of dirty, so maybe that was part of the issue. Right, let's put it all back together. And then we can try a different game to see whether it was an issue with that particular homebrew or not so oh yeah and because i've taken it out i need to replace that screen which is a bit annoying to have to do that every time that would help if i did that too just wait for it to pop back up there it is Although it says waiting for game. Weird, we have a different issue this time. Where some of the text isn't showing up. And none of the game. 
How did cleaning it make it worse? Let's see if I can get to the next stage while anything change. No. Okay, let's try a game we know works. Mario Land, Super Mario Land 1. A game that I've played and finished thousands of times. So I'll definitely know if anything's going awry with this one. Okay. Okay, weird. Everything seems fine with Mario. The frame rate seems a little low. I don't know whether that's because the computer's trying to do like three or four things at once. Um, but it seems okay, which is strange. <laughs> yes, it intercepted all the problems. Um, but yeah, the game seems fine. I did read that there might be some issues with it in the Game Boy Pocket. Um, apparently it works on the GBA SP as well, although it might be a bit awkward to actually fit that on there, but let's try. Obviously, on the GBA SP, it will actually pop out the bottom, which might be a bit uncomfortable to actually try and play it that way. And you won't be able to hear anything because there's no headphone socket. But... It seems to be working perfectly. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit awkward having that cable there. Hey, Diablo Heads here. Hello. I'm definitely going to check out some of your games and demos soon, by the way. Skittles was absolutely singing your praises in the last stream. I can't wait to check some of them out. Um, but it's really, this seems really strange. Like Mario Land seems, from what I can tell, perfectly fine. The frame rate's a bit low. And it's kind of interesting that no matter what Game Boy you play it on, it doesn't pick up any of the colours. Should we try it on the analog pocket? Let's give it a go. Which way does it need to go that way? Okay, it does fit. Does it? It's a bit of a tight fit, but it does fit. It looks a bit weird. Okay, let's try. Let's see what happens. Oh, nice, nice view up my nose there in the second cam. I don't want to do that angle again. Okay, let's get back to the start. Play cartridge. And let's see, it says, sorry, I made a mistake. Turn off the game to start over. So what does that mean? Does that mean quit out and come back on? I think it's getting confused with this information screen. It saw it for a second then. So what do you think's going on here? If I try going into the menu, maybe I'll be able to turn that bit off. Or let's try forced GB mode. Um... I don't know which bit in the menu refers to this first screen. Is there a way of getting rid of this screen, does anyone know? Sorry I made a mistake. Turn off game to start over. Resume cartridge, nothing. Okay, it doesn't seem like the analog pocket can pick it up. Um, what about if I try doing something through here instead. Let's try Tetris Plus, one of my favourite games on the Game Boy. So this is running this is running through the actual internal FPGA rather than off the cartridge. And it's stuck on waiting for game, that's interesting. No, not doing anything. Weird. But I guess that's because it's not actually going through the cartridge. I mean, it, it seems to be kind of working fine. But yeah, it was working fine on this game. But it doesn't seem to be working fine now. Let, let's try this one more time. What about if I mash past that screen? Turn off game to start over. Sorry. 
I mean, I wasn't really expecting it to work in the analog pocket anyway, but it was an interesting test, at least. Let's try... Let's try the EverDrive in the Game Boy Color. This will be interesting. We can try Repugnant, Repugnant Bounty. We get that name right. Repugnant Bounty. Uh, if the SD card was in there, one second. I know where it is. It's here. Let's try that again. It does not like the EverDrive. But let's try just for fun. Is it on here? Well, his game's not on there, but we can try one of the other test ones. Hey, Diablo Head, are you still here? There you go. So, um, yeah, this one seems to be working fine. Oh yeah, I should plug the, um, plug the headphone socket in so you guys can hear it. There you go. And now I can hear it with headphones on too. So this actually seems to be working, which is really surprising. So this is running a homebrew game through the EverDrive. And it seems to be running perfectly fine. Minus the colours. This is my first time trying this game as well. Hey, Quang's here. Hello. Thanks for the follow. So. Yeah, interesting that that worked. Let's see whether we can reset back to the main menu. Because it didn't show the menu before. Let's see whether it does it now. Okay, that's interesting. Any idea? Oh, no, it is working now. No, it's not. I was mistaking my camera up there for the interceptor. Does anyone have any idea why the menu for the EverDrive wouldn't be intercepted by the GB interceptor, but the actual game itself is? That doesn't make any sense. Shall we... Uh, I've actually... Now that Quang's here, can you see it on there? Now we got the legend himself, Asobi. Look at all these blasts from the past. Shall we see whether Egg Racer works on the Interceptor? A classic. Ah, oh, Quang, no! We can't play Egg Racer on stream. How sad. I was hoping to spend the next three hours playing Egg Racer. <laughs> so, that's interesting. Has anyone got any idea why that might or might not work? I have not been breaking the Interceptor. In fact, my curse, I did actually... Should I try playing it in an original Game Boy? This is a Game Boy Color game, though, so I don't think Egg Racer would work on the original anyway. Hey, Quang. Look what else I've got here. Ta-da! Shall we try it out on the Game Boy Light? See, it did go to a good home. Even though the screen looks like it's kind of burnt for some reason. And my 3D printed case for it as well. Let's try it. Let's not try it with the EverDrive just yet. Let's try it with... Let's try Dr. Mario again, because that was an interesting case. I don't know whether this is going to work at all. Yeah, the polarizer in the middle of the screen is gone completely. Look. Don't worry, it wasn't like that when you gave it me. But... Uh, yeah, you can see you, can, you can't actually make out the middle of the screen anymore, which is kind of sad. 
Um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like the Interceptor actually understands the uh, Game Boy Light. Let's just try and refresh the feed. Just to make sure. Let's try turning it back on. Halfway, which means no light, I believe. Are we getting anything? Are we intercepting anything? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. We do have the light on the back still. But nothing's coming through. Let's see whether the connection needed updating. It does seem a little bit temperamental. Let's try again. So it can tell the Game Boy's turned off. Zoom out a bit. You get another lovely shot at my nose there. Okay, it's coming back. Ah, lighter than the pocket. It's actually heavier than the pocket because it uses double A's instead of triple A's. Ooh, okay, there's some weird stuff going on here. So, from what you can see on the Game Boy Pocket, it's... It's playing fine, but on the screen, it's actually frozen on that screen now. Let's just try and refresh it again, just in case. No. It does not like it. Let's try turning the USB cable around. That's what it needed. But yes, kind of a weird stream today, so I hope you guys are entertained with me fumbling around trying to figure out whether this little device will actually work or not. It just seems very temperamental. Like, no. Again, we've kind of got it, but you can't see the germs. But that is just an issue with Dr. Mario, I think, because if we put Mario Land back in... Always entertained, that's good. Hopefully you guys won't be entertained on my podcast soon, because I've actually got some guests coming up. I'm recording one tomorrow afternoon, which should be fun. I think the, uh, the Intercept is actually more to do with the game itself rather than the hardware because Mario Land seems to be running perfectly which is really strange so I've got I've got three guests lined up for the podcast so far I've got um, a YouTuber who talks about visual novels and stuff which is the first episode and I've got two Game Boy developers on there as well which should be interesting I won't tell you who just yet. One of them's kind of a YouTuber, and the other one is someone who's just finished their Kickstarter. And they're actually going to give me a special preview of their upcoming game, which should be cool. Yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to get some developers on. Hey, Quang, maybe you'd like to come back on at some point. You can talk about... Um, I can't remember what the game's called now. How progress on Defused is going. Anyway, I've got a bunch of homebrew games to test out here as well, so. Should we try Super Jetpack? I think this is the one that I flashed. And for that, we will need to get the Game Boy Color back. Let's put it in here. And put that in there. I have two different versions of Jetpack. Because... Oh, something weird's going on already. Yeah, this is the right one. Does the Interceptor not do colour at all, then? Or is it seeing this as an original Game Boy game? Oh, something very strange is going on here. It's very weird that it's running it as a DMG, but it's in Game Boy Color mode. And you're actually getting both kinds of games at once. 
along with a load of really messed up textures. Or messed up... I don't know, I don't even know what could be causing the background tiles to, to end up like that. Any ideas? Uh, by the way, anyone who has pre-ordered Jetpack, it does not look like this. <laughs> so don't worry. You are getting a good game if you've pre-ordered it in, in uh, round three. This is probably not the best demo, sorry, Quang. But it is playable, I guess. Oh yeah, I can fly off now. Does not read GBC. You know what would be a really interesting game to try? I'm going to have to go and try and find it now. But try out something like... What's a game that runs on the Game Boy original, but if you put it in colour, it's got some extra stuff? R-Type? Maybe? Bear with me a second. Oh, actually, I wonder if I do this, but change this to that one. Nope. Nope. No, nope. bear with me a second. I'm wondering if I can take you guys to the other side of the room with me. Let's try that on this one. And come over here. What if I spin that light round? Let's go find some games. And if I put you guys there, then the chat should still be on there too. That one could work as well. Let's see if I can spin the microphone around here. Yeah. Um, Conker's Bad Fur Day could work, maybe. I think that's a dual, dual game one. That could be interesting to try out. We'll try these. Okay. I got a bunch of random things. If I get the microphone back, that would help. I grabbed a bunch of random stuff to try out. So let's try. Let's try Conker's Pocket Tail, because I know that has two different versions of the game, depending on whether it's um, whether it's in a Game Boy Color or an original Game Boy. So, doesn't seem like it's seen anything, but that might be because the feed needs refreshing, annoyingly. It seems very temperamental with how often you need to disconnect it and reconnect it. Let's try now. Every time I switch the Game Boy off, it actually loses connection to the computer completely. Okay, waiting for game. Is it going to do anything? No, that's interesting. Yeah, there was a firmware update, and this is running the latest one, I believe. So it doesn't understand Conker's Pocket Tales at all. But you're right, basically any black game cartridge, let's try this one, should be able to be read because it should just run it in DMG mode. I'll try running them in the in the actual DMG, or 
Well, maybe. My DMG is a little bit broken, but we can try it. Yeah, I thought so. So again, nothing coming out of there at all. And I did just grab an actual colour game as well, just to test it. But again, I'm I'm guessing nothing's going to happen. Yeah, I was at least expecting it to show up with that screen that says not compatible with Game Boy Color. So it's very strange. Very strange that it's not working at all. All right. Here's another one of Clang's games to try. Although I doubt it's going to work on this one either. No. Nothing's coming up on the actual Game Boy either with that one. Did you see that? Did you see what they did with the Nintendo logo? Maybe it's the Game Boy that doesn't like it. I know it doesn't really work in in everything that well. Yeah. They did. They messed with the bootloader. Let's try it in the Game Boy Advance. SP so I can actually see the screen. Again, nothing. Let's try that again. I'm not having much luck so far, am I? No. So it just doesn't like Game Boy Color games. At all. Let's try it with another homebrew game. Flying Arrows. There you go, you can just about see it there. So it should see this one, because this is a DMG game. Oh, it did for a second. It did for a second. Anything? Okay, I'm not pressing anything. Is it going to get past it? Okay, weird. It seems to be working alright now. It just seems very temperamental then, more than anything. Oh, some bad frame rate going on there, compared to what I'm seeing. Again, I don't know whether the bad frame rate is actually linked to the computer doing too much, because I am running two, you know, mirrorless cameras through a 4K capture card, and the Game Boy um, thing. But they seem to be running fine. There's no lag on those screens, so. It's kind of weird that this game's showing so much uh, frame rate issues. Ow. Doable for false advertising. I mean, it works, kind of. It works for Super Mario Land. Ah, why can't I get on there? There we go. Damn it. There we go, we made it to the secret door. And the um, the actual response time between seeing it on the screen and seeing it on the Game Boy isn't that bad. I can't remember how to pick them up. There we go. Ooh, there was a bit of a stutter there. Okay, that seems to be working okay. Let's try another one that's one of the dual games. This one is uh, Winged Warriors, Winged Warriors, which is another really cool homebrew game. Oh, interesting. This one is working. Kind of. Oh, now it's broken. Okay, that's even weirder. So this one broke once the game actually started. That bit bright. There you go, you can actually see it on the screen there now. Yeah, so the really strange thing about this, the intro worked. Let's try that one again. And this time it didn't load anything at all. It didn't even get to the title screen. I'm very confused. My headphone cable's getting in the way. Yeah, nothing at all anymore. Okay. 
Let's try another classic Game Boy one. I don't know whether the homebrew games are confusing it as well. Waiting for game. This one seems okay so far. Yeah, this one seems fine. The sprites are all on the screen okay. Nothing seems to be missing from the Game Boy to the Interceptor. So it does seem very reliant on how the actual game was programmed. That one seems okay. Let's try another dual one. Got Mona and the Witch's Hat. A game that you can play all the way through in about five seconds. Are we going to get anything? No. But what about if we try it in a black and white Game Boy? Will that make any difference? Because it won't be booting up in color mode at all. So maybe that's what it needs. Ooh, weird. Interesting. How do you explain that? I don't think it's actually seeing anything of the actual Game Boy. It's only seeing the cartridge. So it really shouldn't make any difference as to what system you're playing it on. Okay, we have the title screen. Is it going to let me press start this time? I have no idea what's working and what isn't on this, because it seems to be okay now. For some reason, even though it wasn't a second ago. Okay. Seems fine. If anyone's not seen this game before, this is basically the whole game and it lasts about two minutes. It's fun for what it is though. Oh my god. Do you wanna see do you wanna see if Leo Legends works in it, really? Oh my god. I got all these games down, but I didn't get any of the Green Boy ones. There's some of them. I'm actually planning to do a top ten homebrew video for Friday, so I've got quite a few of them out on the table now. But Okay. You made me do it. Let's go and grab the uh, the Green Boy ones off the shelf. I'll spin you around as well. Where are they? Up there. Let's give it a try. I'll grab a bunch of black carts as well, just to try it. Oh, have a look how many random, random Game Boy games I've got stacked up everywhere. There's a bunch there. There's, there's a bunch there. There's a bunch there. There's a bunch in that box. There's a bunch down there. Ah. Uh, And look at the mess on my desk already. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, the whole room's just a complete mess. Let's try Leo Legends. I hope it's in here. How many physical Game Boy games do I have? How many physical homebrews? I think... Yeah, more than 50. Maybe close to 100. I have no idea. Okay. Let's try this absolute classic of a game. I haven't played this since it came out. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need more than one binder. Okay, do we have anything? Let's plug the sound in. Oh my god, it's working. There we go, you should have sound as well now. I got Doc Cosmos here as well because this is an interesting one in the fact that it's a homebrew game that was programmed in assembly. So, insane. Whoever made it, you're insane. Jamie Batterson and Darren Doyle, I think. 
Anyway, for everyone who is a big fan of Leo Legend for the Game Boy, by Green Boy Games, Dan a Punch, it seems to be working fine. And it is. <laughs> you joke about Leo. You joke about Leo Legend, but it's already more interactive than the other one I just played. You kick the ball. CPU saves the ball. But it works. CPU goal. And that's it. As I said in the review, that's the entire game. But it works. Let's see if Doc Cosmos is in here. That'll be an interesting one. Something interesting about the Doc Cosmos release. They put the uh, they put the flap on the wrong way around. So most Game Boy games you would open that way. But this one actually opens from the back. And they, <laughs> they didn't realise that they'd done it backwards until I told them. And something else... Something else about this one. They forgot to they they forgot to put a screw on the cartridge. Leo Legends works no problem at all. Yeah, clearly, all the other games are inferior. I'm interested to see whether this one works or not. I don't actually know whether this works in an original Game Boy anyway. So let's find out together. No. Interesting. It doesn't do anything at all. I thought he might have had a little warning message or something. No. Yeah, I love the I love the cartridge. If it will focus. Yeah, it looks really nice. Look at that. And they're nice custom PCBs too. Very nice. But I'm guessing because it's a colour only game, then it doesn't like it. But I do have a few other multi multi-system ones to test out here so let's try bubble bubble yeah i don't know how maybe they were just testing them and they opened it but hey bubble bubble seems okay i'm not a huge fan of classic bubble bubble the game boy color one i much prefer bubble bubble part one and two but ah yes very good point quang they should not they should not have the notch on there. You know what else annoyed me? Mona and the witch's cat. Oh, actually, that one might be. There was one that was a... Uh... Yeah, Genesis. Should not be a black cartridge, because it's a black and white only game. So, tut tut. Attention to detail matters. <laughs> to, to people like us, at least. But it seems like Bubble Bubble's working fine. I've never actually played the Game Boy Color Bubble Bubble Classic in black and white before, so this is kind of weird. Because the whole point of this was the fact that it was in color. Although, it does seem like the bubbles are disappearing, which they're not on the original system. I don't think so, unless it was just a sprite limit thing. See, the bubbles... Are the bubbles disappearing on there? No. Okay, interesting. So if we if we zoom in on the, on the Game Boy Pocket... Let's just fire a load of bubbles. You can kind of see how they're supposed to be... Transparent, because they're flickering in and out. But I don't think the frame rate on the Interceptor can keep up with it. So they're sort of fading in and out of existence instead. I know it's kind of hard to tell because of the contrast, but if I... It's that side, isn't it? If I maybe turn it down a bit so you can see the bubbles. Yeah, I, I think it's not capturing all the frames properly. But I don't know whether that's actually how it looks if I was just to record it in OBS without streaming. Or whether the stream's reducing the frames a bit more anyway. So it might be that. But I'm trying to figure out basically what causes a game to run properly or not on this. And I can't really tell. 
Hmm. It should be capable of doing a 60 frames a second capture. Because although I've got the cameras on 30 at the minute, they do... They can run at 60. And I'm sure this frame... This uh, stream is running in 60. Yeah, OBS tells me it's in 60 frames a second, so... I don't know whether it's because the USB cable that I'm using is unplugged, but it's going into USB A instead of C using a extension. So I don't know whether that might be causing an issue. I'll try it on my Mac later because that can go from USB C to USB C. And the guy who made this did tell me that it might need USB C to C. So that might be uh, might be why it's not working. Let's try another one of my favourites. Dragon Warrior Monsters. Has anyone played this game? Absolutely fantastic game, and the sequel. I love it just as much as Pokemon, honestly. And we've lost signal again, because I took it out. Ooh, we're getting some weird glitches there. Have I got a save file? No, someone else has a save file. Okay, everything looks okay in the game. Oh my god, you really can't see anything on the actual Game Boy Pocket, can you? Your other half still has the OG copy of Dragon Warrior Monsters, that's good. I was so... Oh, I've got a monster here. I haven't even opened it yet. What am I doing? It might be a bit late, but whatever. Uh, Dragon Warrior Monsters 2 is, yeah, top five, maybe. Maybe the best game on the system, honestly. It's so good. I actually played through it again recently on the Analog Pocket. Should we try it in the DMG? Now, I don't know whether this DMG actually works properly or not, but I did come prepared. I've got batteries. If I can put them in the right way around. Uh, where's the other two? Oh, yeah. Get the second one. It's it's actually incredible. It's such an improvement over the first as well. I don't know where it is, though. I should have, I should have been more prepared. I'm sorry. The table's already a mess. I'm not going back over there again. Right. Let's try... These aren't actually from Ikea. These are from a new shop that opened up near where I live, which is like a, a fake Ikea called Yisk or Yisk or Yisk, something like that. But they do the job. We bought a, we bought a sofa from there recently. Okay, let's see what happens on this. On my modded DMG. That I did myself, and it actually worked! It's the first time I've modded something and it actually worked properly. I was so happy. Um, let's try plugging in the headphones. I've never tried headphones on it, so I don't know whether they work or not. Apparently not. Oh, I didn't quite mod it properly. It was supposed to have a contrast wheel that you can click in to change the colours, but um, yeah, it's stuck. It doesn't turn. So we're stuck with full brightness and very orange game. It doesn't look quite that bright in real life. It's because of how the camera's showing it. But Yeah, I was like 50% done. Anyway, it seems to be running fine. I'm guessing the DMG is probably the correct way of using this cartridge adapter. But yeah, it seems to be working okay. I do have some other things I want to test, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it, but I'm, I want to test it on the Super Game Boy, and the Super Game Boy 2 as well. How about homebrew games with the DMG? Let's try that. Let's try. Let me try. Let's try this one, see if I remember how to play it. Into the blue. Or one of the ones that didn't work. Okay, let's try this one again then. DMG deals damage from Cat Skull Electronics, who are no longer with us, unfortunately. I don't know why, but...
but for some reason they decided to stop selling Game Boy Homebrew stuff. And again, it's having the same issue where it's replacing the background with completely random sprites. Anyone who's watching who knows anything about Game Boy programming, do you have any idea why? Basically, every time I've tried this game on different systems, the background tiles... The background tiles are always um, drawn wrong. Like, I know it's really bright, so you can't quite see the screen properly, but... That's what the room should look like. No. And that's what we're getting. I don't understand where these extra tiles are coming from. And the enemy's not even showing up on this one. Or it is, but it was actually somewhere completely different to where it actually is in the game. Whoa. Yeah, there's something very strange going on with this one. Um, no, I never did ask Catscon why they stopped, actually. I just saw their um, press release saying that they weren't going to weren't going to do them anymore. I don't know whether they were focusing more on the audio side of things, I think. So they were doing a lot of, like, um, what is it, LSDJ mods and stuff instead. But yeah, it seems like, for some reason, DMG deals damage isn't really working properly. I do have some other Catscon ones. I think that was a Catscon one, yeah. Towers of Hanoi, which is a very simple game, but let's see whether it has the same issue. Yeah. I'm guessing it's more to do with how the game was programmed rather than the quality of the cartridge or whatever. Although it's not showing up anything at all there. And what was even weirder, I got sound out of the Game Boy then, just from turning it off and on a few times. Has the interceptor signal dropped again? Maybe. Let's try taking it out. And let's try reconnecting it. Strange, it's not responding at all now. Let's try and add it as a new... Uh, what is it? Video device? Video capture device. No, we are not getting anything. Very strange. It's definitely plugged in. The light's on. The lights are on, but no one's home. Everything is still working. Let's add it as a new source. GB intercept video. Okay, weird. Can you see that box there? So when I added it as a completely new source, it did. Uh, let's do transform fit to screen. And then we want to turn off scale filtering to get those nice crispy pixels. And we can just put that back in there like that. But for some reason, I had to actually set up a new one to get it to register that time. Let's see, Nintendo. Now it worked. Fourth time lucky, I guess, for no apparent reason. Let's see if anything messes up in the game itself. I think we're already having issues with the text. We're having issues with some of the text, which is weird. Oh God. Why are people messaging me at work at this time of night? Don't they have Game Boy streams to do? <laughs> Interesting. So that bit of text worked okay. The menu isn't doing anything. What's going on with this one? Some strange, strange things afoot. afoot. Oh, it's popped up. Is there a loose cable, maybe? I might try diving under the desk and yeah I never I never had any clue what I was meant to do in this game. I'm terrible at these games. Send the people at work a link to Jetpack DX. I don't think any of them would even know what the Game Boy was. No. I lie. Some of them are into games. 
I can't really hide it whenever I'm on a video call at work. They always see all the games in the background. There's something really weird going on with this one though, where only half the sprites are showing up sometimes. Let's try... Let's try another colour and DMG game. Is it going to say anything? Okay, Game & Watch Gallery seems fine. I think I've done something weird with the uh, audio connection in here. Because it's either coming out of one ear, or if I push it, it's coming out of both of them. But this one seems to be working okay. Apart from the audio, which I think is my fault. But yeah, the game seems fine. Nothing any different to what's on the actual system. So, yeah, I really can't pinpoint where the issues are coming from with this. Let's try it. This might take a bit of fiddling and popping cables around and stuff, but let's try with, if I move it to the side a little bit, get my chin out of the way. Let's try it on here. So hopefully... I have my SNES controller here. The best one, by the way. I always thought it was the the Pro Pad, but it's actually this ASCII one, which is the best SNES controller. So, If you're in the market for a new SNES controller, that is the one to get. But let's try. Turning this on with one of these. Okay, we have power. I was trying to be clever with these. I was trying to be clever with those USB switches there, and then I have them all coming out of here on the side of the desk. So we'll see whether it works or not. And there's my new table mount for the camera. But uh, where would that be? Add a new source again. Not that one. This one, maybe? You might have to dive under the desk. Okay, do we have anything? Yay, it worked. Kind of. Right, let's see if we can get anything to actually come through on this. Uh, Mario Land. I'm not really sure how best to show this. Maybe if I put that down there. 
Are we getting anything? Maybe it doesn't like it, but it was worth a try. Hmm, maybe not. I'm not sure where the original uh, Super Game Boy is. I also would have tried that as well. Let's just make sure it is working. Let's try that. I was hoping to try it in the analog pocket dock as well, but maybe it's the Super Game Boy itself that isn't working. Let's do this the proper way. With some Q-tips. Let's give it a proper clean. I haven't used it in a while. Bring the car up just in case. Yeah, here you go. Let's try this. In there. See if anything pops up on the bottom left there. And if it does, then we can try the interceptor again. Yep, so that does work okay. And even though it's in a tiny window. And I died straight away. That is the right way around, isn't it? Let's try it the other way. I can't remember now. Maybe it's meant to go in backwards. Anything, anything. Okay, maybe I just had the game in backwards. We've got a Nintendo logo. Hey, it worked. Ah, they, there you go, actually. There's a good... Um, if I move too close, you can see my chin in frame. There's a good comparison of the frame rate between the Interceptor and what you actually should be able to see, because this stream is running in 60. So if I do that and cut the ends off. Yeah, compare the uh, the difference in the frame rate between these two. It's a lot nicer on the SNES. No sound, obviously, because I only had it set up. I don't think there's any sound, anyway. Can you guys hear any sound? Hey, Tom Sutton's here. Hello. Bit of a weird stream tonight. I'm testing out a new piece of kit. So if you're wondering why everything's completely messy compared to normal, then I'm I'm just doing a few experiments, basically, to see what this thing can actually do and what it can't. But it works. I mean, the frame rate's not great, but it does look nice and sharp, like, not as nice as it does on the actual Super NT. Like, if I scale that up, look how nice that looks. Nothing beats the Super NT, honestly. Apart from the fact that you can't play anything in color. But honestly, if I could play Game Boy Color games in the Super NT, then I really wouldn't be looking for any other solution at all. That's my my dream goal. I want something something as clear as the Super NT with cartridge compatibility for everything. I know some people might say that the uh, GameCube with GB, GBI, Game Boy Interface, not related to the Game Boy Interface that I'm testing today. Some people might say that that's the best way. The best way to record games. But honestly, the, um, the Super NT with the Game Boy Player 2 is the best. Game Boy... Game Boy Advance Consoleizer. Yeah, I have been eyeing one of them up for a long time. Let's try... Back onto our experiments. Let's try Bubble Bubble Classic again. Yeah. 
I hope everyone's doing well, by the way. I know life can be tough. Hopefully I'm providing a bit of entertainment for everyone on a Tuesday night, is it? Is it? Yeah, it is. It's Tuesday. Ah, okay. That's another interesting test. So it does work with the Super Game Boy Warders. Again, which is very interesting. And again, you can... This is a really good comparison as well, actually. So... Um, yeah, you can see how it's supposed to be if I scale this up again. See how the bubbles are on the on the SNES. You can see the bubbles, but on here they're either completely visible or not at all. I mean, it's still kind of horrible seeing them flicker in and out of existence. Uh, but yeah, that's the that's the best way to play them so far. I'll definitely look into getting a. GBA consoleizer at some point. Do you know where I can get one? Or do they have to be like custom made? Feels weird playing these games without any sound. Can you guys hear anything? No. I don't think I've got any input. For the SNES. Let me see if I can change that. Uh, audio input capture new source from none of them where is that coming from output to wave out whoa okay it's very loud ah uh, it's too loud But definitely. Let's try this one. I don't know where that's coming from in OBS. Audio capture one? I can still hear it. Super loud. I don't think it's on stream anymore, but yeah. Hey, I think I've got it working. Does that work? I can hear it okay. <clears throat> you love your job, but it's tiring. That's how I feel at the minute as well. I, ma I managed to get a new job, actually, um, a few months ago now. As a Microsoft 365 architect which is really interesting and I'm getting to do loads of really interesting projects right from scratch but it is very tiring and there's so much going on there was a lot to pick up from like day one as well because I joined about two years into an existing project so there was a lot for me to get my head around I don't know how I've managed to still make videos last year and going through all that at the same time It's, it's all good. It's all money. To go and spend on Quang's stall at London Gaming Market. <laughs> you better have something new for me this time, Quang. I'm coming back for my birthday again. <laughs> you sound you sound like the you sound like the merchant from Resi 4. Got some good prices for you, friend. <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna wear a trench coat with Game Boy games on the inside? Him. <laughs> you should do it. You definitely should. 
I don't know where it is. Anyway, Resident Evil Gaiden wouldn't work on here because it's a Game Boy Color game. You should totally cosplay as a merchant for the next market. What do you do for a job, Tom? What, what is it that's so interesting but tiring for you? Anyway, we know what... We know what Bubble Bubble is. I could play that all day. I better zoom this one out, else you'll just keep getting my uh, keep getting my chin the whole time. Let's go back to testing out some Game Boys. What else have we got? Oh, what else do we actually want to try on here? I was kind of tempted to try out some GBA stuff, but I don't think that would work at all. I did test out the Game Boy camera earlier. A character animator? Wow, that sounds interesting. For what sort of things? For games? Or for like TV shows or something? I better get rid of that one. What was I going to do? Yeah, let's try playing some of the mini-games on here. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard much good in terms of a uh, work-life balance perspective in the animation industry. TV and movies, cool. Let's see if I've got any weird faces on here. Yes! Of course I do. I think all you need to do on this one is just tap the A button as fast as you can. Yeah. Uh. No, the mole beat me. Making the cartoons, awesome. Three D or two D? I'm guessing three D. Let's go back to Game Boy Color. I tricked Sarah's nephews when they were. Oh, there's already batteries in there. I tricked Sarah's me Sarah's nephews when they were really young and told them that the uh, the cartoon channel Nick was my cartoon channel, and because I had the same name, they actually believed me for a little bit, and I bet they were they were so upset when they grew up and found out that that was a lie. They they were watching Nicktoons and an advert came up and it said Nick and I said hey that's my TV channel that is oh my god you have a TV channel oh not really kids are so gullible oh why do we have an error on the uh, why do we have an error on the other drive that's weird fat error six i've never seen that before why is everything breaking today <laughs> Yeah, I think they, they thought I'd invented Spongebob or something. Great, the Everdrive's dead. What else can we do? Let's try playing Black Castle. I never did a review of this game in the end. I presume it should work. I was studying the code for Black, uh, Black Castle, actually. What do you mean you made a mistake? What's going on? Whoa, some very weird stuff going on. I think it's something to do with the way it accesses the uh, sprites. Oh, okay, that's very broken. 
Damn, that's a shame. I was really hoping to play through this one as well, but not this way. Such a good game too. Let's see if it needs reconnecting again. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on with the EverDrive. Ah, no, it's not doing anything. Ah, I was hoping to make a video like my last one going new best way to play and record Game Boy games, but it doesn't really seem that way. Although restarting it does seem to have fixed the uh, connection issues. And the game itself seems okay. Yeah, Black Castle is such a good such a good game for the system. It's so simple, but it it just works so well. And there's loads of little hidden secrets everywhere. <laughs> I hope they didn't. I hope they told all their friends about my YouTube channel instead. Every time I see them, they're like, Nick, I watched your video. It's cute. Oh, we've lost connection again. For no reason. Yeah, the Nicktoons channel, obviously. The one with a billion subscribers on YouTube Kids. Uh, weird. Connection is just gone. I didn't press anything. I didn't touch a wire. Any idea what's going on? I don't. Let's go back to the SP. Hmm, I'm kind of running out of things to try on this. Let's... Oh, I was going to try this, wasn't I? Let's see whether the cheat cartridge can be recognised by this at all. That'll be interesting. Uh, I'm guessing that's the right way round for it. Like that. Maybe? Maybe not? I think it's supposed to go in the other way, so maybe this one won't work. Is there enough room? Oh, there is just about. Let's try. No. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, actually, yeah, let's try it back in the analog pocket again. You wanted me to tweak one of the settings, didn't you? Let's try that. Do you remember what it was? Quang, look at my analog pocket. Not in a case or anything. I just throw it in my pocket like you should do. I remember replying to your tweet and you're like, you're mad. Why would you not put it in something? Uh, right, where's the menu? Where's the option to stop it from booting up? Display system. <laughs> Even if I am, I can't buy one if I do break it. Settings OS startup cartridge settings os startup cartridge oh what and then turn it off and try it okay oh yeah i need to reset the screen as well because it's still stuck thinking it's coming out of the game boy color Let's switch it off completely. And the light is on, so we should be seeing something on there already. Do I need to take it in and out again? Maybe. No, nothing there. Right, let's try adding it. 
as a source for the fourth time. Add a new source. GB intercept video. Why do I have to keep doing that? Transform. Fit to screen. Scale filtering. Point. Scale it down. Put it in the box. Delete the other two. What a hassle. Stretch it to fit. And switch it on. And it should boot straight into the cartridge this time, right? Okay, play. Now, the issue, the issue I think is that screen before. So, let's quit out. The thing that's confusing it is when you press play cartridge, instead of going straight into the cartridge, it's going to this. So I want to try and get rid of this screen. If you know how. I don't really know why you would ever want that screen anyway, because you can see. You can see the cartridge. Why do you need to be told what it is? You should just be able to press play game. I guess it's like trying to tell you is whether you've got an official cart or not, but. Yeah, there's. I don't think there's any way of turning that screen off unless you revert back to the earliest firmware. Um, I can try it in the dock. Maybe, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't actually have that screen on there because I know it does run on a slightly different version of the operating system. So, uh, oh, one thing I hate about the dock. Look how. Difficult it is to line the USB port up. There we go. And to be easy, I'll swap the HDMI cable for this. Okay. So we should have it. Put these back on. I've got headphone hair because I've been wearing headphones all day. So if we turn this back on. And let's put that over there and hide that. So if I make that like that. Okay, that's the analog dock. And for that I need to use this controller, I think. Is it powered on? Is it connected? It should be. Yes, it was just slow. So let's try this. See whether this actually does anything. No, it's still got the same screen. Oh, it's got past it. Wait, no, it hasn't, has it? That's coming from the dock itself. And it looks a bit weird. Damn, I thought we'd got it then. Probably because the size isn't right. I love the filter that the dock gives it. Look how nice that looks. So nice. They're gonna run out. They're gonna roll out some new filters as well soon. But I just love this. It looks so good. Look at that. Even with the slight uh, smoothing of the frames to blend them together, it's so nice. But that's not what we actually wanted to try. We wanted the dock down here. And let's turn this back on. No, it didn't work. Yeah, the Game Boy Light filter is really nice. Resume cartridge. No. Wow, that filter looks horrible when it's scaled down. Right. I better be careful, else I'll end up playing the whole way through Mario Land. But unfortunately. Let's quit out. It looks like it's not going to work because because of that screen before it gets to it. And there's no way of getting rid of that screen. I don't think. Uh, let's see if there's any options in the dock. There really isn't any options at all, really. It's very basic. What about if I turn these off? Still goes to it. 
I don't know what that screen is, but there's no way of getting rid of it at all. I better turn them on, turn them back on then. Quick menu. Hold analog and down. What's that for? Is that for when you're in the game? Or well, well maybe it doesn't do anything on here. It just goes back to that screen. It's called game detail screen if anyone wants to figure out how to deactivate it. But yeah, looks like the docks are no go because the interceptor is getting confused somewhere along the line. Annoyingly. And I could play that forever. Let's, um. Put it in Game Boy Light Blues. There you go. Look how nice that looks. I don't think it's quite scaled properly because you've got some weird um, pixel banding going on, but yeah, love it. Maybe the pocket dock's the best way to record Game Boy games. Now that I'm thinking about it, it can play colour. And it's got frame blend, flame blend blend, flame blend blend, flame, frame blending, and it looks really nice. So, yeah, maybe. It's definitely a contender. And I guess that's even better than the uh, GBA consoleizer, because the consoleizer wouldn't have frame blending with it. I'm guessing. I'm not seeing what the sharpness difference makes on this. Didn't seem to make any difference. Mist is a good option too, but you can't use cartridges, which is a bit of a shame. Anything else you want me to test out before I end up playing all the way through uh, Mario Land for the millionth time? I can't really think of anything else to try. It's been a little bit disappointing, if I'm completely honest, so far. It only seems to have worked on very specific things. And I haven't really decided what's the best console to actually play it on either. I might try some more original Game Boy games. Let's get the binder back out. I haven't really filled it up with much yet. Yeah. Probably, probably right. The analog pocket's probably the best way of recording. I did quite like the GB operator, but obviously that's just running it through a regular emulator on a computer which kind of feels like it's defeating the point of using a cartridge at that point because it's just taking the uh, taking the file off the cartridge let's play let's play my favorite tetris game oh, i haven't got zass i know i'm made of money but i haven't i haven't got enough money to get zass or oh. I can't remember its full title. Chunbi Gunpei Zass something. Let's see. Does my favourite Tetris game work? Oh, the, the SP is really not the best way to use this. Look how awkward the positioning is for the cable. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Is it okay for just original Game Boy games? I guess it seems fine. Oh, I don't want to erase that. I'm really far in. Chikyu Kaiho Gunzas. 
Okay. I'll remember that. eBay remembers it for me. It's in my watch list on eBay. Oh, I remember I was stuck on this level for so long. So, yeah, it seems fine. It doesn't seem like anything's missing. It doesn't really seem like it's every uh, DMG game either because Dr. Mario had issues. But Tetris Plus seems like it's running flawlessly. And because it's kind of a stop motion ish kind of game, you don't even have to worry about the bad frame rate on the capture. Yeah, I think this capture card would fail the ZAS test. If it couldn't handle Bubble Bubble, there's no way it would handle ZAS. I'm going to be stuck here trying to solve this puzzle now. Has anyone in chat played Tetris Plus before? I absolutely love it. Because it's so... So unique in the way that Tetris games play. And it's so addictive as well to see how far you can get in it. And I'm doing horribly. Let's get it down one more level. Oh, something interesting about Tetris Plus 2, well, about Tetris Plus while we, while we're playing it. I was Googling about whether the sequel had ever got a, an official release outside of the arcades, and um, apparently, in 2019, At Games released one of their flashback consoles, one of those like plug-and-play TV system things, and it actually has Tetris Plus 2, which since 1997 has been an arcade exclusive on the flashback arcade like mini tv console like how did this come out of nowhere tetris plus 2 finally got a release and i didn't find out about it until three years later and now it's sold out everywhere i couldn't believe what i was seeing i was like how did it not get a release like on arcade archives or something like why randomly this Legend flashback at game system. They must have had some sort of deal with Jalico or something to port over some of their PC, uh, some of their arcade releases, and they just happened to have the license for Tetris and put it on there for some reason. But I was so surprised to see that, so I'm trying to track one down because I would love to be able to play Tetris Plus 2 because I really love the first one, as you can tell. Oh my god, we've nearly done it! Just need to clear that gap there. Yeah, there we go. Dun, dun, diddly, dun, dun, diddly, dun. It doesn't go, yeah, in this one. That's only on the Saturn and PlayStation. Yeah, I'm, well, it's all down to licenses, isn't it? Especially on uh, Tetris games, because of how difficult the Tetris company is in order to release the Tetris games. They seem to be getting a little better though, because, um, what's the arcade game called that came out on the Switch recently? Uh, Tetris Terror Attack something. I can't remember off the top of my head. I downloaded it on the Switch anyway, and that was really cool because that's been stuck in arcades for so long because it doesn't adhere to the normal Tetris rules. So the fact that Hamster, I'm thinking, managed to get that released is a good sign that the Tetris company is slowly changing their regulations and we might get some more interesting Tetris games and Tetris re-releases coming soon. So that is very exciting. I can't remember what it's called. I know the third one's called Terror Instinct. And I've got the one on the 360. I got it in Japan. Oh, hey, finished another stage. Okay, anyway. I could easily play that all night. 
what are the classic Game Boy games have I got here? I'll go and grab a pile from over there, I guess. Oh, I said I want to have a look again. Okay, let's see whether the theory is correct that it only likes classic DMG exclusive games. Let's try Marble Madness. A classic. And it seems to be booting up okay. One second. Okay, let's see if this works. I can't remember what control type I like. Not this one. These are some weird controls. Let's try that again with the 90 degree ones. Ah, I pressed the same button again. Whoops. Bubble bubble with guns, that sounds cool. Oh, press B. There we go. That is a weird menu. You actually have to press A or B to go up or down. Okay. That feels a lot better. And it seems fine. I mean, I'm looking at it on the computer screen, so there's not really any perceivable lag or anything. What was your game you made before, Tom? Um, it was one of the Incubate releases recently, wasn't it? Magic Panels? We can see if that works. Did it work on the original Game Boy? I can't remember. Ah! I got eaten by the weird sock thing. Yeah, seems fine. I don't know why Dr. Mario didn't work earlier. That's a weird one. Ah! Let's see how far we can get on Marvel Madness. Fido's Magic Tiles, that's it. I know I know there was a there was a, something very similar to it. Magic panels. Sorry. There's too many games now, I can't remember everything. Oh my god, the slowdown on this section on the Game Boy. I always found it weird that there was a Marvel Madness Game Boy Color release as well, which is basically the exact same game. I'm guessing it solved a few of the frame rate issues though. Marvel Madness was just one of those games that was released on literally everything possible at the time. Oh, I'm going too slow. Oh, wow. How did I manage to make it up there? Almost. I can do it. I've got 30 seconds. Go in. Yay. Oh, no. I forgot you're not meant to press anything then. Ah, maybe that's where the 45 degree option is. Ah. 
Wait, you thought the character from Magic Panels looked like me? I hope that's a compliment. <laughs> I've had a load of comments recently on YouTube saying that I look like uh, James McAvoy. I think that's his name. The guy who played young Professor X. Oh my god, I can't get past this. Ah! I can't even see that they're sucking me in. I just disappear. Apparently I do. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say about that comment, but maybe, maybe there will be one. That's all I'm saying. Let's try this game out. If you guys haven't seen this one before, if this works, you're going to be impressed. Hey, Quang. Talking about the uh, Game Boy's 30th anniversary. Hey, I found it! God. I seem like such a fanboy in this stream. Like, hey, Quang's here. Hey, Quang, look at this, look at this, look at this! But yeah, I found it. And all the, all the pixels are intact. Which way do I need to go? Move the camera that way a bit. So, this game is the same age as that shirt. I don't think I'll be able to look at the screen and play this one. Oh my god, Tronimal's here as well, wow. It really is a VIP Game Boy stream this time. Hello, good to see you. And Kim Kong. You made bald, right? I'm sorry if I get if I forget what games people made. Like I just said to Tom, I have a lot to remember. Yeah, I got it right. Shall we see whether it works on here? On the oh, you can't even see it. There you go on the interceptor. Let's use a bomb. You know, this this game was possibly the game that got me into Game Boy Homebrew in the first place. I just remember thinking it was so crazy impressive that something like this existed. And I still don't really understand how they did it. I mean, the bullets are a background layer, right? An animated background layer? Or are they like groups of sprites? But they all have their own individual collision detections applied to them? Or is it a background layer with collision like squares moving around at the same time as the dots show up and disappear? Uh, if Bomb's only a Game Boy Color game then yeah it probably won't work. Draw in direct to the background tiles for the bullets. It's so clever and it works like so well and it's such a smooth frame rate and stuff too. Oh my god, I just realised you can see me in the reflection on the SP screen. So the the ship at the top's a sprite and you're a sprite, but everything else is literally drawn onto the background layer. And then the score and stuff are on the window layer, right? If I understand correctly. Every time I try and get into Game Boy programming, I learn the basics and then think, ah, oh, I haven't got time, I've got to make videos. I wish, I wish I could just do game design and YouTube and nothing else. But alas. Oh, that's, that's insane.
Yeah, it really is the uh, the elite stream today. And hello, Skeet. And uh, no, I'm not allowed to show that game, am I? I do have I do have another game that we could try, but I don't know whether I'm allowed or not. Uh, right, that's enough for that anyway. Making tiny games on stream. Uh, I'm not really confident enough in my programming skills, honestly. I'd like to. Let's try this one. I don't remember whether this... I know it's a see-through cartridge, but I don't know whether it's um, a Game Boy Color exclusive or not. No. Cool. That's what we were talking about earlier. They're not being... They're not being true to the, uh, the actual way the cartridges work for the Game Boy, so... See-through cartridge plays on the original Game Boy. Wait. Yeah. Plays on the original Game Boy, but it doesn't have a indent. That's interesting. Let's try that on the original Game Boy. Oh, it does have one. Naughty. They're not they're not adhering to the rules. Yeah. So do... Have I got an actual Game Boy Color game here? A real one? Yeah, the real ones don't. Why would they... Why would they specifically make a see-through cartridge with a cutout for a DMG if you're not supposed to be able to play see-through cartridges on a DMG? It just confuses people. I've tried doing things in Game Boy Studio. But I wanted to I wanted to do something in GBDK to practice programming. As I used to I used to absolutely hate programming, but since I had to do it for my job, I've kind of kind of got to grips with with it a little bit. But I would like to I would like to get better at it, and I thought making a Game Boy game would be a really good way of improving my programming skills, even if yeah, a lot of things aren't really going to use C, but at least the concepts and the syntax and stuff are kind of transferable skills. So I thought if I try and make a game using GBDK, at least I'll have... I'll be working towards something more than just making a game, if that makes sense. It's kind of also also a life skill at the same time. And wow, I did terribly on that. Does that make sense? It made sense in my head, anyway. I wonder if... Oh, it's on my Mac. It's not on here. I was going to show you where I got up to with uh, with actually programming. Let's see. Let's see if it can actually recognize the SD card this time. Fat error. I don't know what's going on with the uh, with the other drive. Weird. Let's try some more games. What else do we have? I'm sure I pulled some more games out. Uh, where are they? Let's try this. Yeah, I do. I do like programming. I used to hate it, but now that I actually understand how to get started, whenever I actually figure something out, it's like it's a rush of adrenaline, isn't it? It's like yes, I finally managed to figure it out. Uh, I'm okay. I've got this. Yeah. Can't say hi to Skittles today. There's too many wires everywhere. Hey, everyone in the chat who knows how to program, how did how did you get into it, first of all? How did it click for you as well? That's That's what I really struggled with for a long time. I'd, you know, I'd been to classes, I'd read all the all the books on how to do it but when I actually sat down to start writing something it was like everything I'd learned I just forgot about instantly <laughs> how did you get it to oh we're we're encountering we're encountering some weird bugs again let me zoom in here there is a non-existent key there's a non-existent key right there
Do I already have the key? Okay, the game's a bit confused. I already have the key. <clears throat> you started using on, on web pages. That's interesting. If I don't know how to program, I'm still planning on making something coherent. I guess that that's the good thing about GB Studio. You don't really need to know how to program. It's a good starting point as well, I think, because if you're making something in GB Studio, you still have to know... Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why that's happening. Why do you guys think the key isn't disappearing when I'm picking it up? Everything else about this game seems to be running fine. But I'm picking the key up. And it's, uh, it's just staying in place. I'm going to get rid of that block. There we go. Hmm, interesting. Let's see. If I pick the bell up, the bell disappears. The first thing you made was a VJ cart and a music cart in RGBDS. What's that again? Re Rednecks, Game Boy, something, software. I've been reading up about the history of homebrew games on the Game Boy. Yeah, <laughs> the Interceptor can see a special dimension that people can't. It's very weird that it's only the key that it's doing. Like, See that coin there? The coin disappeared. Rednecks Game Boy development software. Yeah, and that is a plugin for assembly code, right? I think. It, oh, I, miss, I missed a comment then from Tom. It took me a long time before I was willing to learn programming from hardware assembly level going up. Wow, you started right from from assembly language and worked your way up then. A lot of people I know these days do it the other way around. They start with, like, learning in Scratch and then Python and then C Sharp or something and do it that way around. I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. So at uni I did programming for a year and I started with C. That's why I'm kind of comfortable going with GBDK. Although I didn't really get any further than, like, drawing the outline of a Christmas tree or something in in like stars in notepad but i guess at least i understood the idea behind um how to get something that you've programmed up and running at least you understand assembly but you wouldn't write an assembly i understand assembly from a um academic point of view but i've never tried to write anything in it yeah, you're not a masochist. As I was as I was saying before, the uh, the guy who made this game is he wrote it entirely in assembly. He's a madman. He actually live streamed the entire thing as well, so you can you can actually watch it. I kind of commented there as well. Started with ZX Spectrum Basic. Spent the early years copying out listings from magazines. I think that's how a lot of people started, is copying, like, game listings. And then, I guess you could tweak it. Over time, I started learning what the components actually did and had to debug a lot of types in the listings, misprints. Move to Pascal and C. See, I wish, I wish I grew up having magazines where you could actually type out your own games. That would be really cool. I was just too late for that. My dad did. Yeah. It's a shame. It would have been a lot easier to get into it. The first real development thing I ever had was something like Click Team Fusion on Windows, but it wasn't that. It was like some some weird game maker thing. 
I don't know what I'm buying here. Why is it just telling me the prices and not what the things actually do? Oh, another weird glitch. Look at the money. Does that mean I've got unlimited money in GB, uh, GB Interceptor World? Hmm. I don't know whether WAV files would work. Would they? Would it depend on how they were made? As to whether it only used the channels that the Game Boy understands? Oh, I spent a lot of time in RPG Maker, yeah. I loved RPG Maker. Which version? Which version did you play? XP is definitely my favourite. Oh yeah, I have to lure them out first. And then... Drop them. Does that mean technically you could get an audio sample in a WAV file? Ah, go away. Got him. I'm so confused as to why it's just the key that still exists. Oh yeah, probably would take up the entire cartridge as well. 2003. That one was pretty good. I used that one for a little bit. I actually used some of the sprite sheets from 2003 and imported them into XP because I liked them more. 20 years ago. Yeah, wow. What's the latest one? MV, is it? MX? Oh yeah, you do actually. How much space did that take up? Is it like Sega, where the Sega logo took up like a third of the cartridge? Don't destroy my block. Yay, we did it. Wow, an entire bank of memory. Oh my god. How does bank switching work in GB Studio? I'm guessing it's just done automatically, right? You don't need to worry about it. I was having a look through the um, through the source code for some games, uh, Black Castle, trying to understand how he'd done the bank switching. Nope, I do not understand yet. It's automated. That's good. It was a clever way for Nintendo to add um, add extra memory after the fact. Oh, cool. Yeah, it definitely saves a lot of headache if you don't need to worry about how to switch it. Ah. Uh, so how does it actually work? Does it switch out all of the sprites that you're allowed to use? So it gives you a completely new sprite sheet when you go to a different bank, or can you sort of pull bits and pieces out? Like when 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 do you need to switch banks? Is it like if you're loading up a completely new area? Or is it Whenever you run out of memory and you need to free some space up, you can pull some stuff over and switch into a new bank that way. Load in extra code and data. But then you can't access the stuff in, in a different bank at that point. I should probably try out a different game. I've been playing this one for ages now. I do love the Solomon's Key game, so... Someone... Developers in the chat, you need to make a game like this. 
I love these kind of single screen puzzle games, is that what you'd call them? No. Come on. Damn it, I just missed him. Come on, stand on the floor. Yay, got him. You have a Solomon's Key concept. Awesome. Yeah, I love these games. Solomon's Key, Donkey Kong 94, Bubble Bubble. Although that's technically not really a single screen. A game like this with ray tracing. Can GB Studio do ray tracing yet? I want to get the secret items. Oh, another another good game in this sort of style on the Game Boy that you guys should definitely take inspiration from, Pocket Bomberman. Pocket Bomberman is a fantastic sort of, not single screen, but small area platformer puzzle game. Love that one. Anyway, for now, that's enough of that. Let's see what else we've got. Let's see whether this classic works. Yeah, you saw it. Miyamoto's hidden gem, shall we say. No, I've never seen that one. You made a game I don't know about? Hmm, something weird's going on with the, uh, with the screen on this one. Well, oh, that, that was something I didn't try. I wonder whether putting it in widescreen would make any difference. But as it's intercepting before it gets to the system, I guess it wouldn't. No, someone else asked me how many homebrew games I own earlier. I have no idea. I mean, I've probably got about... Well, I can't, I can't hold all of them, but I've probably got about 50 loose ones. And maybe, like, another... 20? 30-ish physicals in boxes and actually something else that I've got coming up that I want to let's put back on there for a sec something else that I want to do soon is GBA homebrew so I've got these to look at as well soon does anyone know about these that one I was very excited to find the developer actually re-released it recently uh, I did have a load more here as well. There's another Pico one. I don't know whether that counts as a homebrew or not. What do you guys think? It's just... It's a NES homebrew put onto a Game Boy cartridge. Yeah, well over 50. I've probably got 50 loose ones and then... You probably can't see from here. There's a load there. There's some Incubate ones. Limited run releases. Yeah, there's some there, and there's a, that stack in the corner I think is homebrew as well, so there's a few, and then these ones here, uh, this was something exciting that I got recently, if it'll focus, I'm not sure where I've put the box for it. And World Reborn as well. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm really struggling to keep up, honestly. I'm trying to get all the releases as they come out, but I keep spotting all these really weird, obscure ones on things like Indiegogo and stuff. I'm like, uh, do I really want to spend so much money trying to collect these? And, you know, as you saw in my last video, the quality is kind of all over the place as well recently. But... I do love it. I love the scene. I love collecting for it. I love the fact that it's grown so much. But yeah. It's just really cool. And I did I did reply to someone the other day and say I really should try and make a game for the Game Boy because I do feel kind of like an imposter. Like, critiquing them and, you know, kind of 
talking about them all the time, but I've not really got anything to show in terms of my actual knowledge. Oh no, sorry, did I miss did I miss someone's sub? It should be working. Let me test it. Yeah, it should be working. Fight magic items run. I'm so sorry, two minutes ago. I bet it popped up while I was on full screen mode. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I didn't notice it in uh, when you actually made it. Let me go back on full screen cam and copy in whatever that is, alert box. Bear with me one second. Let me just put that in there. If it will let me. Add source. Let's give that a test. Yeah, there we go. I'll put it up there. There we go. And it should also work for follows. Um, I don't know whether donations actually work yet, but I'll just test it with everything. Yeah, 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 and you should be able to hear it as well. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry I missed it. And thank you, Quang, for telling me that someone had, else I would have missed it in entirely. Uh, let's see, what, what have I missed out on? Reviewers don't need to be able to make games. You're given your opinion on the game, so the only experience you need is playing other games. You don't need to be part of the industry to critique it. True. True. I did see someone on Twitter who gave that opinion and said that they think all game reviewers should also make games, and I thought that's that's not really how it works, but because I'm reviewing the games in such a small niche i thought maybe maybe it'd be good if i actually had something to show for my understanding of the subgenre if you if you want to call it that and i would i would like to understand as well from a technical perspective perspective like what's possible on the system and like what's possible depending on the type of program that they've used to make the game as well. So. Although the the different ways of making the games all seem to be blurring together somewhat these days. Like, in the past, GB Studio was a lot less capable than it is now. And then that means that if you get a game that is made in uh, GB Studio version 1, it's really obvious that it's missing a lot of features. Ah, that's how you do it. Has anyone played Mole Mania before? There's a Mole Mania DX patch in the works, that's cool. Ah, uh, if my if my Everdrive was working, there was another DX patch. That I wanted to try. Someone's patched Mega Man 5. Which uh, is just an awesome game in itself. Because it's a completely unique Mega Man experience. Um, yeah, I really wanted to play that game in colour. And Mega Man 1. Awesome. I might I might go and get one of the Mega Man games actually. We can test that in a minute. How do I do this? And then go underneath. I love this game. It's so Ah I was saying. It's such a nice concept. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with GB Studio. It's just that a lot of the early games all felt the same. Oh my god. That's enough of that. I'm going to go and find a Mega Man game.
Squeeze back into my corner. That was quick, I found one. Let's try. Where should I point it? Mega Man 4! Which is a really, really cool game for the Game Boy. It's great that there's an option for Game Boy where you don't need to know programming. The first proper game I ever made, I made in Stencil, which was, which is kind of, kind of drag and drop, kind of not. I don't really know how to explain it. The Mega Man 5 color patch is amazing. Mark Max, who did the patch, used to come to my stream to show us updates. Oh, wow. Oh, no, it's not working. I might download it later and play it tonight or tomorrow. Oh, I just I just realised on the... If I'm playing it on the SP, you guys don't have any sound, do you? Let's put it back in the Game Boy Color. Yeah, Prince of Persia. Was there an another world port on the Game Boy? Where's my cable? There we go. There we go! Do we have sound again? I think we do. Do we have sound on the game? Yes. And let's see whether this all works okay. Because this is a fairly late release for the Game Boy as well. I forgot how much darker the Game Boy Color's screen is compared to the other Game Boys. You can barely see anything. But it seems okay so far. Come on, who plays Mega Man for the story? Who should we go with first? Toadman? Is he as easy as he is in the NES version? I love the Game Boy Mega Man games. They did such a good job taking the essence of the NES game and squeezing it down onto the Game Boy without really losing that much in the process. Yeah, I saw I saw that on on Twitter the other day as well. Very impressive. Seems like another world's on everything these days. I know there was a GBA port as well. Well, Mega Man 4 seems to be working fine. Let's see if we can get to the boss. Oh, and by the way, I'm also playing it, looking at the game, looking at the computer screen, and it doesn't feel like there's any lag. At least not any noticeable lag. I mean, obviously there is a bit, because... I'm just playing in the OBS stream window, so it's not really ideal, but... I still seem to be able to take out this weird robot snail. No issues. My god. One thing about the Game Boy version compared to the NES is everything's so much slower. B, whatever the B is for. I don't know whether this one has the hidden items like the NES version does. Oh my god, the slowdown is so bad. I haven't got any weapons yet. God, I love the Mega Man 4 soundtrack so much. I was really surprised, actually, regarding Mega Man 4. I did my top 15 NES games video, and I put Mega Man 4 as number one, and I thought everyone was going to shout at me and go, No! How can you say Mega Man 4 is the best? Mega Man 2 is obviously the best. But no, I actually heard a lot of people agreeing with me. 
which I was very surprised about. So I'm glad I'm not alone in my love of the original version of Mega Man 4. I always thought it was like the the black sheep of the Mega Man NES games. Oh no, I'm gonna die. Ah! Whoa, how did I dodge that? Yeah. Which way we're we meant to go? What's the point of having no wall there if you're not supposed to go that way? Have I got rush yet? No. That's weird. You start with Rush in the in the original, I'm pretty sure. I remember before the Game Boy Color came out, the um, one of the Nintendo magazines had a preview for it, and they just announced that a Turok game was coming out for the Game Boy Color. And the, the news article was basically saying, is the Game Boy Color going to be way more powerful than we actually thought it would be? Are we going to get fully 3D games like Turok on the Game Boy Color? And then it turned out to be just a side-scrolling platformer. And they were very disappointed. They were really hyping it up with, like, reduced size screenshots of the N64 game. Yes, if you get the pattern right, it is the same as the NES game. Ah! Oh no, I've messed up. Come on, keep jumping. Yay, easy. Yeah, it's true. I mean, did we get Tyrannosaurus Tex? Technically? Not, what, not during the days where it would have been impressive to see on a handheld. It's so sad. I remember seeing previews of that game as well and thinking it looked amazing. Pretty sure that's Game Boy Color only, right? Yay, now we got Rush. Eventually. When was it? 2014? Something like that? That Pico released it? Bright Man, Pharaoh Man, or Ring Man? Or is that Dive Man? Yeah. I guess Ring Man's on part two. We had um, Baseball 2000 on the original Game Boy. Didn't that have, like, 20 player multi-cart support that was impossible to use back in the day or something? <clears throat> there was something about that having massively, like, a lot more players than, than was normally possible. Wolfenstein port for Game Boy Color as well. Yeah, you, sh you should try it. I think a lot of people kind of thought that um, Defused was Game Boy Color only by how it looks and plays. Is there anything different you need to do in GBDK to get it to work as a, as a Game Boy Game Boy Color exclusive that would make it more difficult? Um, can't you convince him to print you a cartridge as a one-off? I've been thinking about doing a video series on games that push the system's hardware, so if you've got any recommendations for Game Boy Color games that take advantage of that extra CPU speed, let me know, because that would make for an interesting video, I think. Including homebrew projects. Because eventually, what I want to do... Here's a bit of... 
Ah, oh, same, same jump again. I'm not paying attention. Here's a bit of behind the scenes ideas for the channel. Outside of Patreon. Um, yeah, eventually what I want to do is have a big playlist for each console where I go over top games, hidden gems, games that took full advantage of the system, or games that pushed the system to its limits, and a series on the history of the system as well, like how it was developed, when it was released around the world and stuff like that as well, and how it did in each region, um, the best ways to play it today and stuff like that too. So I want to have like a really well-rounded set of videos to go along with each retro system. And I think that would be something really cool to try and aim for over the next few years. So if you've got any ideas for games that could fit into those categories, then let me know. And yeah, let me know if that sounds like a good idea as well. It's definitely something that's going to keep me busy anyway, for a long time. Ah, oh god, oh god. This is different to the next game. <gasps> ah, no! There was a... Ah! Wait, where, well, I've missed out on so many comments here. A Russian guy from Game Boy Kingdom did about five pieces and some... Oh, uh, I've seen him. On Etsy. Yeah. He had a really cool looking version of... He had a really cool looking like collector's edition of Dangan GB on there. I thought it looked awesome. But yeah, it was about two hundred dollars. It's like uh, I don't know whether it's worth it or not. I've got the cat skull one for like a tenner. I'm happy. I think. But it did look really good. Yeah, let's let's talk, Crank, when I get round to making some of them videos. There's a CPU. Oh, why do I keep falling down there? CPU double speed patch for baseball that makes it run pretty well. Oh, cool. Maybe that's something I could do as well for, for the systems that have them at least, like patches that improve games beyond what how they were, how they were originally. And that could include stuff like the Mega Man color hacks and stuff too. This bit was really difficult. Let's see if I can get through it. Ah, oh, no! Let's see if I can get through it. It dies. Instantly. Last try. Then I'll try it another game. Maybe I'll go back to another homebrew release, because they're kind of interesting in the way that they're programmed. Because it seems, at least so far, that 99% of the actual official Game Boy games seem to run fine. I did kind of want to find um, R-Type to see what happens, because that game actually plays differently depending on whether it's in a Game Boy Color or an original Game Boy. So it'd be interesting if the Interceptor actually sees a different game completely to what's actually visible on the Game Boy Color. So I might go and root through the shelves again in a minute, see if we can find that. Shouldn't be too hard to find because I haven't got as many black cartridges as I do with the uh, grey ones. Okay, we're back. I used to be really good at this game. I did a let's play of it like 10, 12 years ago. That sounds really cool. There was a, um, a GBA Tetris homebrew that um, Inside Gadgets released physically recently and I missed out on it and now it's out of stock everywhere. So I was really sad that I missed that. Yeah, yeah, I got a bit further. I've got a few Tetris mods for the Game Boy that in introduced hard drop and stuff, but I don't think I've got that one. 
I might have to try and have a look for that later. I'm guessing it's on romhacking.net. That's basically where I find everything. Come on up. I need that. Yeah, cool. After this stream, I'll, I'll have a look, see if I can download that. But which version of Tetris? Is it Tetris DX or the original? Ah! Was there a checkpoint? Yay! Okay, final life. Then I'll go and look for our type. I'm not sure if it will do anything though, because Conker didn't. Can I go that way? No. They made this level a lot harder than it is on the NES. There's a lot more platforming. On the NES, it's really easy to get past these bits. Because they're usually either doubled up or you can just slide straight across them. Are you going to come back? There was a really good homebrew being made for the Game Boy that was kind of like Mega Man. But I don't think the developer's doing anything anymore. Rocket, Rocket Man, I think it was called? It was on one of the first ever homebrew videos that I did, and I thought it was so good. And then they've just they've just never updated progress on it since then. Which is a massive shame, because it seemed really impressive. I hate timing this on the NES game. It seems a bit more lenient here, because the frames keep dropping. Ah. At least they only take three hits. Rush. Come here. Can we beat the boss with no lives? Okay. Here's the more difficult one, where you have to jump in between them. Good job I picked up that health. Ah, uh, yes! Okay, we dodged it the third time. Oh, no! Uh, there we go. I was so close to the boss, it's only just down there. He talked with the Tetris Rossi guy, he's a German like me, and requested from me a physical of his hack. Really nice. Wow, that's cool. I really need to check that out then. Sounds great. Right. Bear with me one second, I'm going to go and have a look through my Game Boy Color game, see whether I can find that. I think it's R-Type DX. Got it. I did it! Where's the camera? Put it away. Yeah, I found it. I found it. And a bunch of other games. Pocket Bomberman. I kind of wanted to play that one. Right. Oh my god, look at the state of my desk already. I'm going to have to clean all this up soon. It's got to be nice and clear again for work tomorrow. And I have a really nice half eight morning video call as well. That's always fun. Right, let's see what happens here. It's getting very confused. Oh my god. It's really confused. What? Okay. So, I know it's really hard to see the Game Boy Color screen, but... 
you've actually got the choice of three different R-Type games, including the original Game Boy ones. So I'm wondering if I try one of the black and white versions, like this one, whether it will fix it on the Interceptor. That's even more interesting. It's not recognised it at all. So even though it's now playing just a regular black and white game, I wonder whether it'll work in the actual DMG Game Boy or not. Yeah. It's interesting because it is doing something. So it's like one of those in-between games. Whereas Conker's Pocket Tales, which is another black cartridge game, didn't do anything at all. So I'll try it in the DMG after this. Let's try the Game Boy Color version of the original R-Type. No, it just keeps saying, sorry, I made a mistake. Yes, you did. Uh, let's, I'm really scared of taking that out because that is just a 3D printed. It's just a 3D printed cartridge that goes over the PCB. I'm really worried about pulling it too far and it breaking. So let's get the original Game Boy back. Let's take out these fake IKEA batteries. And let's put them in here. Uh, where's the battery back? How have I lost the battery cover? There it is. Okay, let's try it in here. Okay, it's in. Let's see what happens now. Okay, we've got a clear image now. <clears throat> so, I'm even more confused as to how the Interceptor works now, because I was told that it doesn't see the console it's plugged into. It just sees the cartridge. But I'm guessing because the cartridge can still see what system it's on, it's running the code from the cartridge based on the system, and then the Interceptor's only seeing the code that the cartridge has swapped to. Let's see. The difference between the DMG and GBC is the switch in the VRAM bank. One does the tiles, the other does the color, but they write to the same memory space. So when you get all the A's in a row, it's setting the attribute value. But since it thinks it's the DMG, there's no attribute to change, just the value of the actual tile. So it's, yeah, so even though I can see it in color, it still thinks it's an original Game Boy. And it's trying to switch the tiles to show up on the Game Boy Color. And as it's doing that, the Interceptor's seeing the Switch tiles, but not the Game Boy Color versions of them. Interesting. The car is sending GBC commands to the console, and the Interceptor doesn't know what to do with it. That's really fascinating. So, yeah, it seems to be running perfectly fine on this one. So it's a kind of... it's it's a mix of seeing the console and the cartridge, then. That's really cool, because you would never see it doing that, otherwise. Oh yeah, once it's up and running on the right system, seems fine. Yeah, the Interceptor just reads whatever the, is on the cartridge, but the cartridge knows what it's being plugged into. So the cartridge doesn't see the interceptor at all. It's literally just a pass through. And the interceptor intercepts it. Interesting. Must have been a nightmare to get it to work with as many games as possible. Because the way they share the code with the system I'm guessing differs depending on the system, on how it was programmed. Huh. 
Yeah, that's interesting. How does it know what buttons are being pressed if it... Is there anything different about how the D-pad works to how the buttons work? I remember reading on Twitter they were having a lot of trouble trying to get the, uh, the D-pad inputs to work, so I don't know what they managed to do in the end. All the buttons as well. Oh, okay. I'm guessing it's just because the buttons update the code on the cartridge and then it's sort of going up and back down again. Oh no, I haven't got my little ship. Uh, I thought it was trapped then. Why? So... In that case, let's try... Where is it? Did I bring Conquer out? Yeah, there it is. Let's see what happens if we put Conquer on the DMJ. Save data is not compatible with your hardware. Oh, is that because I saved on the Game Boy Color version? What's really interesting about this game is there's literally two different versions of the game. It's not just the fact that one has colour and one doesn't. The actual the actual stages themselves are, are different. Like, one's an earlier version of the game. I used to play this one all the time as a kid. And then what the hell did they do to Conquer on the N64? I still wish Twelve Tales came out as well, as well as Bad Fur Day. As much as I love Bad Fur Day, you can't get enough rare 3D platformers. But yeah, this cutscene's completely different, depending on whether you play it on a colour or original. But, yeah, it seems fine. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. I remember collecting acorns and and digging and going in weird dungeons. It's been a long time since I played this. Press select to dig. God, they're still in prison. Yeah, maybe all the interceptor does is actually just look at the video signal. The camera's a bit erratic in this, isn't it? Is there nothing here? But it's good to know that it works, at least. <clears throat> wonder what else I can test. I didn't really have any idea what I was going to actually be testing this stream, because I guessed it would just work on everything, but it's actually been really interesting to try it out. There's been some things that work really well, some things that don't work at all, some things I expected to work and didn't. Head northeast to the forest guardian's house. What is that down here? I haven't got a slingshot yet. Have I? No. Can I not attack yet? No. Ah! Oh, somehow I did. No, you just told me that. Oh, 
Wow. I don't think I've got this far in the game since uh, since uh, I played it when I was like 10 years old. Ah! I got killed by a Deku scrub. Try prehistoric. Mm, okay. Let's see what, whether I can find it. Uh, it might be in the case already. Let's have a look. They had done in alphabetical order, so if it's in here. I have personal organizer. Oh, um, no. no. Whenever I'm bored at work, I'm slowly filling this out. Using the list from Game Boy Database. I'll spin the camera around. You guys can watch me. I'm trying to find it somewhere. Around there. Let's see whether I can find it. There's, an... the mic. There's another game I need to do a video on soon. Unreleased GBA game that just got a physical version. So it's on my list. My big list. I found some more homebrew games I didn't have out. Here's something else cool that I didn't show off in the last video. Special soundtrack for Gelatinous for the Game Boy, sent over by John Rue. So that's pretty cool. And a sticker sheet. Come with me. Yeah, I give up. I'll try and look for it off stream. Yeah, I tried the Super Game Boy. I tried it with Bubble Bubble, I think. Ah, look at my hair. I've been wearing headphones all day. I know what I haven't tried it with. It might be a bit difficult to, to show. I haven't tried it on the GameCube. Should we try that? What time is it? It's half ten. I can stream for a bit longer. How am I going to show that? Let's see. Let's 
try that. Take it for them. Take it for them. Here's where my fancy setup falls apart. It's not plugged in. Oh. Right, it should be coming on. Oh, you want to know something else cool that I got? Why is it not turning on? If you can see that. It's a Game Boy player for the original PlayStation 1. I don't know where my PS1 is, so I can't try it yet, but I'm very curious to see to see what it's like. Where the hell is the controller? I have no idea where the wave bird is. I just went to go and grab this. Hello, Starlack. I can see he's popped up on the chat. Damn. Let's just try this. I don't know whether the cable will reach this far though, that's the only issue. I'll try, I'll try and get a big extension USB cable. Let's do it this way round. Oh, you can't see it. There you go. Good. Got to find a way of getting this to the computer on the other side of the room. No. Oh my god, it was close. Look. Okay. 
Now let's try. Yeah, I'm scared to move now. Okay. Moment of truth. If I go back on here. What a messy stream this has been. Okay. Let's try that one. It doesn't really matter what option I pick on there because we're interested in seeing if anything comes up on the Game Boy Interceptor. It doesn't look like it's seen anything at all. Unless it's the fact that it was unplugged and that I've got to change the controls back around. Let's come back over here. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is definitely a, an interesting stream. It worked. Oh my God, it worked. It actually worked. So this is a Game Boy game running through the Interceptor. from the GameCube. There you go, it worked. Should we try it with a Game Boy Color game and see what it thinks about that? Let's try putting our type in there. It's probably not gonna do anything. Let's see if anything happens. I did have two interceptors, but I had to send one back because it was broken. It might take a bit of time to get back to the screen. Uh, the only issue with using swiss it takes a long time it takes a long time to boot up every time you want to do anything yeah as expected it's having the same issue that it did last time where it it's um it's intercepting it all wrong so this is what happens if an original Game Boy game runs through the Game Boy Color, but you're seeing the code running back on an original Game Boy, which I think is really, really fascinating. And then I don't think it goes anywhere from there, does it? Yeah. Oh my god. I've never played a Game Boy game with so much lag before. Let's see how, I c Let's see how far I can get playing it on the computer screen watching it through this oh yeah look what look what's there look what i finally got and it works tv game six okay let's see whether i can oh my god the the delay is so bad how not to record Game Boy games? Hey, I'm actually not doing not, not doing too bad. The interceptor just gives up as soon as you try and boot a game on here. It's weird how it can still see the menu even though it jumbles everything up and then it gets to the actual game and it's just like, no, I just don't get it now. Yeah, it's a fantastic port on the Game Boy Color. Really impressive. Yeah, better than the Interceptor. Except I have to run a 10 metre long HDMI cable from one side of the room to the other to record on the GameCube. Which is... Oh, it won't be on here anymore because I, I plugged in the Super NT so it won't be able to see the GameCube. But... I think that's it for now. I mean, I've been streaming for three hours and I've tried pretty much every combination 
possible of different systems and different ways of trying this. So yeah, thank you so much everyone who joined me for this. I really did enjoy testing it out. Playing some of my favourite games, playing some homebrew games that you guys have made and stuff. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, try and join in next time. Yeah, thanks Quang for coming along. Appreciate you being here. Thanks everyone else. Thanks for all the new subs and followers. I do appreciate all of you. And yeah, don't worry Starlack. Good to see you again anyway. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll try and stream again soon. And look forward to my top 15 homebrew games video on Friday. I think that's what I'm going to do. I haven't actually recorded it yet. But anyway, I was about to say I'm going to go to sleep. But I've been drinking Monster all night. So I might be up for a while. I've got to, I've got to clean up after this stream anyway. But yeah, thanks everyone. See you all again soon. Bye.